Welcome back, everybody, here to the CSGO Championship Series. I'm Toby One, joined by Asaticist, as we are going into map number three, Gamers 2 up against Hellraisers. At the end of map number one, to be honest, I thought, let's give me a quick map number two. Yeah, Hellraisers looks so good on Dust 2. Um, and it was against a team, and like I said, streaky on Dust 2, Gamers 2, um, th that have had some good results and then won abysmal one against Fnatic quite recently. Overpass, okay, great. I knew it was going to be a lot closer at the very least. I actually expected Gamers 2 to take that. But now Mirage, we're in another situation where we could have a dust score line uh, in favor of Hellraisers. It depends entirely. I mean, the knife round is very important. We saw what it did on, on Overpass. Had they started yeah. out T-side, the momentum gets that far ahead. The second round, second half pistol pushes them over the top. It, it might not have gone that way for them. So if they can start out CT, if they can get their op adaptively moving around from the window into A, maybe one at Cat, you know, it, it depends on how they play it entirely and how Hellraisers chooses to read against them. Um, if they can get a good start, if they can build momentum is essentially what I'm trying to say. It's very possible this could go the distance, um, but Hellraisers seems to have the upper hand on, on reading them when it comes down to maps that are, 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 are more known. Yeah, well, with, with the last one, yeah, their, their read wasn't, it didn't really feel right. I know I, I, I was just I was, mapping I, experience. I, yeah. So. Uh, maybe I, I just I just kind of felt like like their whole movement was just disjointed. They didn't know how to connect things up per perfectly. And I like the way gamers to actually approach things. Where Hellraiser thought, well, maybe it does actually come down to it. They just sat back and and tried to get pickoffs here and there, but never really controlled anything. And with the with the way that like the last map worked, it was he kind of needed to really grab it and control it a lot more. Because with the ASI changes, overpass, he just. I don't think it was really possible for Hellraiser to try and play a passive game. Uh, where now we're here, I think it's a lot more possible. I think here, Hellraisers, they can just win on shots. They can win on positioning. Yeah, you look for your picks here and there, but rotation's a lot simpler. Everything's a lot more familiar. And Hellraiser's defense is what got them the start that was so magnificent on Dust 2. And it came down to Innocence and ability to actually read how they were playing it, get smokes out effectively toward mid in that position. And if Hellraisers again can set up beautifully against them. The, the one thing I'm going to be very curious to see is actually that. If, if Innocent can get smokes out, if they have a good A execution, they might be able to catch them behind that smoke either at jungle uh, and, and on ticket booth back towards CT. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is essentially what happened with Team Liquid against Flipside. It's what happened last night when we saw Flipside plays. Teams are playing a lot more passive at the A site lately. And smokes are everything. If they can smoke off and execute, they have a chance. If their smokes aren't effective again, Hellraisers has this easily. And I actually think Hellraisers... Uh, should be aware of that. I think everyone needs to be aware of that, but I think Hellraisers, the way they play, their style of, of, of aggression, especially with a player like Dosia and, and, and Co., I mean, they're going to push through those. They're going to be beyond those. So, I mean, we'll see. I, I think Hellraisers has the upper hand. Uh, I, I'm with you on that one, man. I, Hellraisers have shown wonderful talent, but for me, if Gamers 2 can find that aggressive feel I had uh, before an overpass, then I think G2 could start to roll with this one because uh, they're both aggressive on both CT and, and T side. The other thing to say too is about these, this veto system is that overpass very likely might have been banned out if we did a double double ban yeah. pick, pick system whereas where it's ban pick you pretty much I mean they banned out Cobble right away if I remember correctly it was them that banned Cobble so that's another map they wouldn't play and then overpass got picked up because it was left in the pool and G2 figured hey we've got an advantage we know it better Again, if it's a double ban, we don't see that opportunity. It becomes a lot harder for G2, and that's why I kind of like this. They can you can play to your strengths instead of your you know your second choices in that in that sense. Well, it looks like we're almost getting ready to rock and rumble. We do have a couple of weird bots in the in the game, um, but it looks like G2 are ready for, ready for our knife rounds. So we can get our next map started. It's a long night of Counter-Strike coming your way. This is the third game of our best of three. The winner of this goes up against Flipside in a full best of five. So it's a long night of Counter-Strike for whoever comes, like, whoever gets through into the finals. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the best of five is going to be interesting too because it's, it's a ban-ban system. So they'll, they'll basically pick out either their worst map or if they're comfortable on all the maps they'll pick up the best one that the other team has in their pocket mm -hmm. and then essentially you're going to pick you're going you're gonna to play whatever's left so in my expectations if we see how if we see g2 go through i mean maybe they'll ban out mirage they banned out i think i'm trying to think i think it was actually i, I can't remember now what they banned out first they might go for that again but 
regardless, we're going to see Cobble played by flip side. They'll leave that in. That's going to yes. be there again. And, and in all likeliness... Well, then, then again, would you want to ban out Cobble considering what flip side did previously on it? Well, that's I mean, that's the other thing. But the problem is I really think that if, if G2 goes through, they're going to ban out what they're weak at. I mean, Hellraisers might ban it out, but I would expect they want to take out Overpass after what just happened. And, and Cobble might sneak through. And I would say Flipside's probably going to take out Dust, too, because that's a map for them that hasn't been good. So we'll have to see how that plays, because it's, it's really... You're playing five out of seven maps in the pool in that final. But we got to get there first. That's, that we uh, do. We still have Mirage in front of us. That we do. And uh, the only thing that's holding us back right now is our last player from Hellraisers has not connected into the game just yet. So uh, once we see his arrival, we can start our knife round. The console keeps spamming it out, saying, are you ready to go? Um... <laughs> G2 is just like, yeah, just do it whenever you want to. I'm down for that. I don't know where they went. Like, I was talking before, I was like, are you, are you actually having a snack? Is this now, like, brunch? I say brunch, like it's brunch? actually middle yeah. of the day, but yeah. it's not. I know, we <laughs> it's, walked... It's night time. So, yeah, so for me, I'm six hours ahead of my regular time zone. We walked in today at, what, like, three o'clock into the studio. I said, good yep. morning, and the production staff went, yeah, for you. <laughs> I walked, it's not morning. I walked in after you, like, like maybe five minutes later, and also said good morning. It's like, what the hell is this? It's just like... We live, on, we live on night time. All right, so, uh, well, this is actually the start. Or Yeah, we're going to knife we're, round. We are, we are in knife round? Okay, cool. I was watching the counter. As uh, let, let the knifing begin, and we'll see who gets the CT side. If that's what they want to choose. I'd just like to see G2 take the T side on this map, and just show me that aggression again. Yeah, and between these two teams, on the two maps we've seen, CT side has made all the difference. So we'll see if that plays out. G2 is going to get yeah, it. Swap. But, uh, I mean, yep. very different on Mirage. Um, it's, it's traditionally been called a CT-sided map. I would say less so as of late. Uh, 8, 7, 9, 6. Very, uh, very, very, very After common. last night, I don't want to call this map I, sided in right, any way, shape, right. or form. We saw 13-2, 13-2. So. Right, we, we, we saw just how much that mid basically controlled the entire map. Coming up through underpass, controlling that mid connector. Uh, once that went down... It was like you could, like, it's, you can't even just split them in half. It's not like when we look at Cobblestone and you think, oh, yeah, you lost your mid connector, you're never going to be able to come back to defend your A side. In this case, there's still multiple avenues that the CTs can move back on. But with that hold last night, if you guys haven't seen the game, check out the VODs, find it wherever it is. I'm sure someone will link you a wonderful uh, thing in the chat so you can all go find it. Uh, but definitely check out our map from last night. It was amazing. Game is 2 versus Hellraisers. Let's get into it. Final deciding map. Underway. Pistol round. G2 versus HR. Let's do it. So armor investments. One can of fire and a flash for Spiro. We're all going to go for smoke. So not a heavy investment on the CT side. I mean, money-wise, yes, but not in terms of wanting to take battles. They want to control map, whereas it's only armor for three players on the Ts and then a couple of flashes, and they're actually heading toward B, but yeah, it's, a, fake. it's a bit of a fake. They're, they're, trying to the, they're trying to secure mid, so they threw a flash out. She flashed up both the CT defenders over on the B side, obviously realizing you're going to stack two over there during pistol round, and then they just backed it up. So the bomb's coming up again through this area, that underpass area, to try and control the window, get the pick off on that guy, and then just move through CT connector. They also have to be careful as... Uh, well, that CT connector is not even protected. Innocent sitting there inside the window, or actually just a little bit back towards jungle, and Rylan is rotating over towards the B side. They think they're there, but it's not. They've moved in. They are coming up through the hole in the roof, but the bomb is being planted over on A by Kucha right now. There is one person that could screw around with this, and that's Manise. He's over in Palace at the moment, so he can come from behind, scouts him out, already starts to spam. Oh, As easy Mouse will come for, for the retake. Yeah, easy kill. So they're absolutely limiting the movement right now for that Lurk player in Dosia, but they've still got to find these kills at A. As Mouse is trying to come through, he's got two in front of him. He's actually going to oh, find them both. both! What an absolutely great reaction shot, and they're diffusing while all that's happening because they divide, they conquer, they pull the players off the bomb site. So G2, despite a bomb going down, do get that, but that's crucial. They will not invest a single penny into this side for the terrorists in this round, and they'll buy in round number three now. It's kind of funny to see uh, Dossier as well as uh, Adren sticking around, still around window, when you realize there's three players over on the site. You get the bomb down on A, yet the guy in Palace, once he started shooting, it's like, oh, we lost our CT connector, but they just kept trying to keep the guys on B over B, but there was only one left. I'm surprised that the A control and the retake was just so easy. Now G2, just play the range game with uh, one P90, two M4s, and a couple of Famous. And they're able to pretty well hold this A site. The bomb has still come up through underpass again, and the movement will come up through connector. But Maniz, 
They're just picking off uh, Hellraisers one by one. And he's going to see the other one. Or did he? I think he got a glimpse of him over at ramp. Especially now this they're shooting coming out. Yeah, it's a clean wipe. There's only a little bit of damage coming into two of the two play, uh, CT players, but G2, yeah, but very simple round. Here's the buy. Even with a clean wipe, like I said, not a single penny invested. Mm. They won't get a whole lot of, uh, of nades to work with, not full nades. They'll go smoke slashes for execution, which is correct decision, but they'll have five AKs. That's and that correct. actually means they've got the better buy as a result of this because there hasn't been a full upgrade on the CT side to read this. They still have to make it work. They need to find these early pickups over on uh, G2. Because even without the buy, they already showed they can they can basically play the range game. I know it's early and a bit bit too early to tell what their default's going to be, but Maniz is actually playing aggressive at A, and that's less and less common with the smoke execution. So if he can catch them out inside their entrance, this could be good, but we'll see if that actually is something that's going to be a regular habit. A little bit of damage done to Mal's over at B. Mm -hmm. yeah. Adrian trying to just make him check. While Spiro is able to hold up in that mid, he's the only... Uh, he's, he's got help from CT uh, from the connector, for A connector. But there's a lot of movement. Adrian's going to come up through the underpass. And Spiro is still sitting in ladder room. Here's that movement out. Jumps out, takes out one, coming up through catwalk. Tries to get the hell out of there before he gets shot even more. And successful at doing so with the flash. There's a little bit more cover to get all the way deeper into that B site. Yeah, perfect positioning with him with that gun up close. Just spams away. Surprised they didn't pursue that a little bit harder, especially where they had some presence inside connector to prevent the flank shot. As Maniz now still up close, has given himself away. And Adren's found a way inside the site because they gave him connector pretty much for free. So Innocent down. Angel now going to find Maniz, and he's still not done as Adren comes in. Rollins going to fall as well, so they execute well on A. It was slow happening, and that early blind. pick was against them, but there's Spiro again still coming around, and you're right, that flash at him off guard, so easy kill. The troll teeth in the clip of... The P90, chew away. And look at the HP now for both CT players. 16, well, zero for Mauser. It's hardly to anything to play with, man. You try and re-breach into a site when you've got no life points on you. Uh, and the Molotov you threw at the last point didn't also like force any player out. So you had no way to get Hell Raises to reposition and give you the pick shot. The, the very important thing to note, though, is, yeah, they win that first gun. But they're forced to buy up three more, so they still haven't built a bank from that. And there's still enough money on the CT side to bring guns out. So this round would still force an eco on the opposing side. Shots at mid. Innocent. One, one HP. That's, that's what we call a leaf point. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. Go no. ahead. Dota reference. No. I'll count it. No. Is that another one? Yeah, it was. Oh, no. It was. Like, we'll beat it out of you yet. Elite point. <laughs> this can't be elite branch. Just the one. He needs to toggle his armlet to stay alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, strength gain. Imagine if you do that. You can switch your armor into life points halfway through your halfway through the through the map. Thank God you cannot. Smoke's <laughs> gonna go off at window. This will limit Rollin to peek out. They want to try and establish a bit of a mid presence so they can split onto B through catwalk. As Adren's already pushed up. Mouse is also Rollin. there though. There's a hole in that smoke. He could he could see through the bottom corner. In fact, I think that's actually what uh, Dossier is trying to exploit. But here comes this B push I was talking about because Mouse has already pushed up. He's on the right side, and if he just waits it out with this shotgun, it could be easy shots and easy picking. The question is, how quick can they counter it? Spiros, meanwhile, found Angel. Check, now they'll right, execute check, in. Right. He does check it. Oh, so careful, so aware, and he gets the kill with that AK-47. Innocent, meanwhile, does find Doja, and Rollins not done. That's a Dren down. He's going to find the bomb nice. player and Kutcher as well. So, Flamey, all that remains... He's going to have to be absolutely on fire. Rollins still circling, tries to find him. He comes around from the back side of the bench, gets the kill on at least one, so limits it down. The rotators are still trying to come around from either side of him. They're spamming away. Maniz can't find that kill. The bomb goes down crucially, but they'll easily pick up the round. So Gamers 2 with their third, and as I said, that does force a save back on the T side. That bomb plant, though, does mean they could force Galil's. I'm not sure they're going to want to. Uh, this move from Rollin, he just got it perfect. Uh, he's under pressure. The T's are about to take the side. If he didn't take out those two players right then, even with the flanker, it may not have been possible. And with the last with the last T down, yeah, he gets the bomb plant down, but the only way he'll defend it is if, if he's a Hydra. He had to attack two different directions with two different heads. But not going to be possible. Obviously, because that's a mythical creature. So, Hellraiser's a little bit slower. This time they're looking towards mid-Angel. Actually, look how quick he's moving up. 
Double flashes, smart, well, actually even a nade being thrown up into apartments, but they're coming in through Connector. Again, Hellraiser. This is the second time they've been able to just take out Connector, and Manise, he is over in jungle. He's going to look for him to come over. It's Innocent who gets the kill, so actually both Manise and Innocent holding inside that jungle, a little bit further back towards the window, and Rallon, he's forced to go down the CT stairs. There is more support behind him again. They're just functioning in twos, and Innocent really working so hard here. Taking out Flamey, Adra, and Kusha all added to the mantle. Oh, well, Angel is like, the, he's the only one left in jungle. Well, he's the angel of his own death. Oh, they're does diffusing. get rolling, they're but still they're diffusing. still diffusing. This will be a diffusing. It's Actually, came off it, but it's okay. It's easily picked up. The, I, the one thing I'm not liking right now from G2, sure, they're about to get their fourth round, but if that was an eco, and they st or rather an anti-eco in their case, and they still gave up a site very easily. And another bomb plant came out. I mean, this is just death by a thousand paper cuts because as they exploit that more and more and continue to get these bomb downs and the money bonus comes in, not only are they going to be able to buy consistently, but they're going to start to pick up and, and, and catch on to what's going to happen defensively at A, and they're, mm -hmm. they're going to exploit that. There's no question. How, I mean, that was far too passive in my opinion. I'm, I'm just surprised we're seeing such holes in the defense line. Like, you always want to hold your line. You know where Hellraiser's managed to breach, but they it's just so its just so late that they get that. Like, they don't have a great control zone. And now Hellraiser's going to try and exploit that by pushing up through Palace and coming in on top of that A site. They are moving in. Nice smokes and flashes. Some flashing out both Jungle as well as Connector. And they do get the plant down. The Nays are coming in as well. That's going to be nice and deep, but not really a lot of damage towards the CT. They're still worried about the connector, but with the smoke coverage there, sitting very close to Ostia, looking for the opening, and he's going to find one. Does he see the second over on the left? No, he doesn't. Quick ult from Maniz will bring him down, but they're running out of time now, G2. They have to retake the site, and they've got one ult left. That's all. It's just Maniz now with the M4. He's on top of the site, on top of the bomb, and he's going to go for the defuse, trying to use the smoke to cover the... The, uh, the sound effect, but it's not going to happen. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Rollin drops, sees the player over towards CT. That leaves Innocent the only one left. They're passively playing it. Smokes come out, cut off Innocent. Spiro's in window. The idea with having two directly in A and one on Cat is your window player becomes your third player at A from jungle immediately. Yep. Spiro needs to, or pardon me, Innocent needs to get up on top of the stairwell and look over top. Instead, it forces Spiro to go all the way through CT. He's late to A, and at that point, they already had full sight presence. So they've got to find a way to counter these smokes and counter that execution. Well, they're doing it this time. They're a lot more aggressive, but you're on the front position. You lose your forward defender over on A, and you're dragging everyone over. But again, it's Hellraisers playing the dummy play. Mouse is the only one defending the B site, and that's where the bomb's coming with Kusha, because Angel is putting up one hell of a fight. He takes two down, still sitting on this ramp, looking in towards A, and Mouse from the short A, he need, we need to go back over to him right now because he's the only man that can stop this plant from B. And there he goes. He drops. Angel takes out Spiro. And it's like G2. They don't know where HR are coming. They're now not that, reading the play. That was just a great read. They knew that they'd exploited A as I talked about, and uh, and likely there was going to be a counter. That was the correct counter. By having Rollin go up underneath Shadow, it's, it's one of the ways you can do that because now you're not forcing one of your dead players to have to cover for a gap. He's already inside the site. He can slow them down enough, and that'll allow your, your, your third player from window a lot more room to breathe. And uh, it doesn't mean the rotation has to be as timely, but oh. all this time they get aggressive and get caught out immediately for it. So Hellraisers has the answer to the everything right now. Look at even, uh, Angel's managed to take out Connector. The spam's coming. He's got double flashes to make sure that that jungle player cannot see anything. Even a, even a Molotov is going to be thrown out. As they do bring him down below the patio, that's going to be Rollin. So there's your front defender over on A, gone. And Angel still holds the Connector. Running out through mid, Innocent's going to be shut down. He's had a fantastic game so far. But there's just no space for him to really work. Spiro as well as Mouse there, the last one to try and save this. The nade's coming up a little bit too deep. But the CTs are still tagged up a little bit, and you got Kusha with the AWP. He's going to get the first pick up. That's Spiro down. And it's a three-on-one situation for Mouse, who is sitting on top of the bomb site. But he needs some hell of, like, he needs Hellraiser to all just peek one by one. He kills them off and takes the bomb. That's the only way he's going to succeed here. The bomb's on the other side of the boxes. He has to save. And the reason that he's the last one left is that he rotated incorrectly, in my opinion. The whole point of your cat player, again, going back to this 2-2-1, two, two, or 2-1-2, two, two, pardon me, default, is that your cat player covers off your connector from the backside to allow your window player to get into A. Instead, he went up ladder, dropped into window. They had two players smoked out in window. Only two players left to have the fight in A. If he can at least help take down a Dren who had full control of connector from the catwalk, or at least keep him busy, your A player's job becomes a lot easier. 
Instead, he rotates incorrectly, has to go all the way through CT. The site's already controlled. I mean, at this point, if you're not going to play those rotations correctly, you better to go back to a, a 1B, 1 mid, 3A setup. Hellraisers, they're using these to try and clean up these choke points. A very aggressive move from Spira going into underpass. They are on eco, hence they're trying to just take Hellraiser by surprise. Nissen's able to do it. He brings down Adrian. But there's not much more follow-up to this one. Or well, maybe there will be as Dossier comes in again. So Innocent, he'll take a fall. And it's just now a four on three. What's Maniz waiting for? Yeah, Maniz, is this is, I mean, this is cr crucial for him right now. Maus isn't that close. He's in connector, but he wouldn't be able to get there, although they're falling back they, off they of don't, it. They don't want to move in. Like, at this point, all the pickoffs are going to expose and Maniz A is hearing a lot them. more. Dozier has made a lot of noise. He's hearing them run away. He could be able to force this, so as soon as they get to A, he'll be high on, hot on their heels. And he's already making that move. Dozier has low HP. He's the one with the bomb. If Maniz, oh, he's not confident about it. He doesn't pursue. He, if wants, he, had a he pursuit, wants to come back through connector. If he had a pursuit and caught that bomb carrier, that could have been absolutely detrimental. Instead, they'll secure passively instead. Running out of time, Maniz, he goes down the mid, trying to come up through the underpass. Angel is waiting for him. At least Rollins going to bring down one, breaks down two, and he has the bomb on top of him with 15 seconds left. There's not much more the T's can do, especially with that AWP. He's going to go straight into the line of fire. They pick up the AWP, they get the round, and Hellraiser is just pressured by the clock. Yeah, that was... Uh I mean, that was close. The passive play actually ended up catching out Maniz, but they wanted it nonetheless, and lack of execution. I, I, I'm still not sure why they were so discouraged on B. They had two players toward A. They could have taken that. Maniz was the only one standing in their way. It would have been easy to overwhelm them with numbers and get a bomb plant out of it, but they tried to fall off of it. Angel makes the call. It was his decision, oh, but Maniz is going to make the shot. It's Adren that's down inside Palace, and now Angel's going to try and come up from the A ramp to help support his player that's already inside the site. That was Flamey, but he's already dropped. But again, Dozier has come up from the connector. There's no one there again. Spiro's gone back through CT, and there's three trying to hold this site from one angle. Fortunately, they haven't gotten in with that bomb, but shots are still rattling off, and Angel's falling back. Dozier's going to go back into window. They're giving up that position. Oh, I'm missing the shot. They can hold them out. Can't need that one, but then again, the Tech Nine's going to finish the job. There's just two T players left, Dossia, and I've got a second now, but the CT connector player will bring him down. And finally, someone gets in that position. Mouse gets a kill from there because that's been their Achilles heel, and he'll make it a double. I mean, three players at CT, yes, okay, they haven't breached the site yet. You can hold them off if you wanted, but one player in connector wouldn't have even allowed them to get into War Jungle where Dossia mm -hmm. was playing, and they're just not giving it the attention it deserves when they're rotating. At the same time, they have been able to get at least the retakes in the last couple of rounds. Sure. So but hell they, races they are being be capped up lot, at four. A lot more efficiently, and the fact that it's that close means that it, it's coming down to one on ones, and that's—I mean—that's not comfortable. Those easily go the other way. If you look at Fnatic and why they're so successful, it's the way that JW, Flush, and Crims all play off each other at middle, and uh, Crims is able to hold that connector. So that, I mean, this is definitely an issue for them. Well, and again, they're up there for free. They're going to walk directly uh, in. Rollins at least caught Rollins. them. Yeah, at least Innocent's aware. But they got up mid rather uncontested off the back of some good smokes, and they smoked off Cat. Allowed them to push further, and the shots continue to come out. Down to two on two. Minis is going to have to get this shot on he the player it. connector. That's the bomb. While well, the bomb was already down, the bomb secured. And that nade's going to do great damage. The pistol, not enough to flows him off, but Dosi is low. He's in the red HP, and there it is. Easy shot. So Gamers 2 do get their seventh now. Yeah, that was a lot better from Gamers 2. Like, yeah, they were able to take up mid, but at the same time, like, G2 knew that HR have been pushing so aggressively up through that mid connector. So they just held back, and they just tried to play the spam game. Now, you had one person still sitting on, on those A stairs, so you had your close-in shooter, so no one could just walk out without them knowing. And the guy from A was up a little bit further, just sitting on the side itself, Leans over and just spams through the smoke. B presence this time. Pistols out. They're actually going to regroup an underpass and try and take this mid differently. That's right above them, though, is Spiro. Yeah, Spiro's uh, already up at the L turn. Innocent's innocent. in the window. And an A down should do some more damage, but he actually elects to throw it, bounce it toward the top of Catwalk, or pardon me, Connector, just so they don't get in. They found one in response. That's Maniz, but Spiro's still pushed up. Ooh. Ladder room kill for him. Off angle. Dragon, now, dragon hitbox right behind him. Able well, to connect. Here's the thing. He's still playing passively. They're inside connector, and he's actually looking toward window. All he had to do was walk out there. It would have been easy kills. Nonetheless, they should pick up this round as Dosi is the only one left. 
There's not much more he can achieve apart from maybe you pick off and pick up a nice weapon. But all he's got is a tech knight at the moment. And there's your jump out and Mouse will bring him down. So 8-4 will be the round count now as we will go into the 13th round. As this, this is that choke point. So Hellraiser, they push up, but this time it was a really nice crossfire coming out from G2. Having Innocent inside that window, and then the one short, there wasn't much more space to move there from Hellraisers. They yeah, didn't I mean, just have the free move like they've had the last two, three rounds. Yeah, th I mean, they're getting away with the rounds. That's the important thing, and, and, and they're still holding on to some money to do it, so they're still fragile. Hellraisers. I just think they could be even more efficient if they just tidied up that connector. Well, he's getting some, they're at least holding all, the, all these recent rounds. Hellraisers are going to come in for the B site. So, first smoke just going to come up, and uh, wow, that's a very aggressive move up by Mouse. He's actually moved up into the apartments, into the frontal position for it, with Hellraiser's all in front. Angel's waiting to throw out that nade, but Kusha... Okay, Mouse has backed up. He's basically on the platform just in front of the truck, and here comes Hellraiser's. They throw everything, but with a double ball, he's down. It's just... It's, you, you don't want to run through the fire and the flames. You have to hold back. Flash is galore. It will be the CTs getting flashed up a little bit more than the Ts, though. And in comes Innocent, bringing extra support. They still have to get down from the apartments, but the spam's too much. Innocent picks up two, and now Mouse should be able to finish up the last one. Angel will drop, and we go 9-4 now with uh, G2. Getting some really great momentum, holding the momentum in this game now. Yeah, now they've got it going, and I, I have to say Hellraiser's... Haven't found the executions. They did that one brilliant round where they smoked them out and Spiro rotated through CT, but they haven't done it since. And it's been a while since they've found the pick they're looking for either. That, that came off the back of getting Rollin down very early at the A site. They're setting up again for A this time. Flamey's already up inside Palace. They pre-flash that, forces him to take one step, and I think Rollin heard it because he's looking back that direction where he was looking at the ramp just before. And he's also back toward jungle. But here comes the smokes over. And he's forced back inside the site. They've got one on stairwell. They've got one on jungle. They, but they've got two players on the four side of it. And there's the aggression. At least they catch out Rollin. And he's dropped just before that. Innocent spams away. Does take down a Dren through that smoke. And Spiro has come up through the connector this time. And it's into a three on three. Bomb does go down. Now they've got to hold off this retake. Those smokes still deployed. Do let them fall back and take off better positions. Doja's going to check the flank. No one's there just yet. He's also trying to get back to Palace if he can. Or they actually get, he's going all the way back around through mid-connector. Uh, he's going to mid try connector. and get behind them at connector, yep. But they're on it. They've got a diffuser on it. And the smoke's out. Spiro's got the first. It's Angel down. Kutcher's no got time. it. They're going to get the diffuse because Doja's nowhere to be found. So the play might have seemed clever in his mind, but that just takes far too long. And G2 pick up another round. Man, oh man, Hellraiser's just not looking coordinated at all right now. G2 did the greatest thing they could do then. It wasn't just a passive retake, try and find one pick, move forward, try and take one pick, move forward. They moved through aggressively. They forced Hellraiser to reveal their positions. They found two, didn't see anyone else there, and just went for the defuse inside the smoke, forcing Hellraiser to reveal all of their positions. And of course, the third player just going completely missing. And already Innocent opens up the account with the M4 straight down mid. Be nice little nade with also the AK shots, picking up the head of Spiro. So a 1-1 one, one trade off in, in the mid push. But they still push forward. Doja's gonna try and get inside that connector again. Miniz is the first one he would come across. But he's got an AWP and Flamey's already found himself in Sandwich, so he's gonna have to play this one-on-one. -on -one. He can't trying see. Trying to find it. The Flames are blocking his vision. He does get the kill, but he's gotta watch his back now because there it is. There's Flamey immediately out to counter him. Meanwhile, Angel lurking at B. Nice shot on Maus. That's gonna allow him in. And he should secure this site. They'll rotate over and bring the bomb. Adren's already in the apartments, and Flamey's also going to catch Innocent on the rotate. So it's all on Rollin. This round, surely they have to get 10-5. Should be our halftime score, but let's not count it too soon. Uh, Rollin will go for one last hurrah. He does, he does have 100 life points in the armor with the defuse kit, so he's got everything he sort of needs apart from teammates. And Hellraiser just flashing him up. He's still got everything too, like smokes, flashes, nades, mollies, everything. Flashes one way. He's going to get, no, he doesn't even get the one pick up. Angel will bring him down. So it will still be a 10-5 to Hellraisers. I don't think Hellraisers will be too sad with that. Like five pickups up against uh, G2. It won't be the greatest thing because they have had a lot of opportunities to get more rounds during this half. But this is still meant to be a CT side of map. Yeah. Meant to be. Uh, sorry, I was a little distracted. I was trying to find out this, this new counter. It's actually 26 seconds for that rotational flank that Doja was trying to do. The bomb timer 
they're obviously going to be pushed forward to the site. You're relying on two players to hold three at that point. There's, you're not going to mm-hmm. get there in time. So, I mean, that was that was a pretty risky play. 10-5, Hellraisers will be okay with that. I don't think they'll be overly satisfied. I think, like I said, 8-7-9-6 is, is becoming more and more common on this map. It's not out of the reach, though. They win this pistol. They get that three-round spread. We're suddenly at 10-8. They start building up that momentum. We saw what Flipside did with it with a little bit of momentum last night. So... It's possible, very, very possible. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to that to our next round. I'm also looking forward to seeing uh, G2 over on the T side. As I was saying before, when we were casting overpass, I like how these guys try and move as a squad. Like, even if you don't know the map that well, they just they breach through nicely. They move as a squad, and they don't they don't really show much fear. Of course, it can completely backfire as they get caught on crossfires. But either way, we'll see if they can win on the pistol round. They look towards the mid. As we have started now our second half of the nades, a lot of them, two of them coming in towards window and already a team kill. Actually coming out innocent, killing down, killing off Spiro. And they lost the extra one to Angel, who's now trying to get himself back into the little forest area, jungle, to try and keep himself alive. And Dossie with another pick too. This is this has gone horribly wrong for G2. Horribly, horribly wrong. So this is exactly what I meant. Now they can try and build up to this 10-8 score. Because yep. there hasn't even been a bomb plant, so we should, prohibiting one in the next round, we should have to uh, save for three on the T side. Just biding his time in the air ramp. He's spotted now. Kutcher's the one that sees him, but he's got 14. He won't be the one to repeek. Oh, there it is. Adren gets the kill, so 10 6. Let's see what Hellraisers can do with this. It's all on the line. Map three, winner of this, goes through to our grand final. Winner of that goes through to the league, so. Tense. It is. It is. And Hellraisers, they're coming back from behind. They've got the momentum. Two M4s. We actually have a Tech 9 into the hands of Dossia, so uh, he's managed to steal that one from the cold dead fingers of G2, which basically means he's got a submachine gun. And we'll, uh, oh, okay. This gets to be a new one. A four man underpass move. I mean, he's just the one giving him some, some eyesight up through, up through mid. And they're looking to pick off window and then just breach in through a connector, more than likely. But Kush has fallen back a very long way. The Flash is catching out the, the, the tease a little bit. And here they come through a connector. Where's these nades? Now they start to fly and they're really in a horrible choke point. They've moved up, but they were just seen coming. Every player dies. Well, every player gets to live. You, you work out which team was which. I mean, ultimately what they were trying to do by going all underpass is force a close battle and exploit connector to divide the A site, but it never happened. There was no one up close for them to find, and it just it got red, got countered too easily. Yeah. They, ha they wanted to try something it, it, like new, interesting, different. Maybe they could make a hole. That's now they're going to come in again. We have another eco coming out from the T's. They do at least manage to bring down Adrian. The nade's coming over. That's too deep. He's going down for the plan instead. Flamey, actually just using his pistol now. That nade did bring down Spear, and the last one left up on top of the Stonehenge. And he'll drop on down. So 10 to 7, the bomb will be uh, defused, and that'll make it 10 to 8. As Hellraisers will at least have to go up against real guns coming out from G2 in the next round. And it's now or never. Win the fourth, force another eco tie game just as quickly as that. We're going to see an op for Miniz. We'll see an op for Kutcher. We'll see how they play it. Kutcher's going to actually head toward the A site, so it won't be a window pick. They're actually going back to this more standard. Actually, they're going for a full split. It's going to be a 3-2, and Miniz Ooh, finds nice Flamey pick. first. So, man, advantage G2. He does take a bit of damage in response, and Kutcher falls back and heads inside the connector as a result, and he catches them an underpass, but he gets countered and traded immediately, and every trade that goes the way, well, especially in a 4 versus 3, but every trade that goes the way of the terrorists... <laughs> is advantageous because it splits up your D and forces them to spread. Oh, oh! Minis pulls a Chris J looking for the push player and fires oh. and catches his teammate. Never mind the advantage they had. We're back to three on three. It seemed so clever. It seemed so logical, but you're oh, outsmarted only by your teammate. Shot. Okay, Cole. I cannot believe that just happened. Hey. So. Now they've got to make up for lost ground as they try and sell off on B. Spiro's the one doing it. They've got everyone to rotate, so they may still get away with this round as Maniz and Innocent have headed into A, but they've got to get this bomb down quickly because Angel's already coming up from the connector, and he's inside the site. Plants down. Adren's going to join him. Dosia's going to go the long way. Maniz catches Adren, and now he'll also catch out Angel. So great work from him. He might actually end up with ace. five kills in the round, although it won't be an ace because one of which was his teammate. <laughs> Small detail, it's a salty ace. 
So <laughs> a salty ace. I like it. Dosa's not going to have any of it, though. He takes him down. He's still playing for this, but he's going to have to fall. He doesn't have time, and he doesn't have a kit, so he'll run away yeah. and save the M4. Hellraisers, or pardon me, G2, yeah. are going to win the first gun and make it 11 to 8, and that's that much closer for them. <laughs> Maniz is just publicly apologizing right now to his own teammate now that he is, in fact, Ra dead. Rather hysterically. Yeah, and uh, we get to see it in super slow motion so you can enjoy every single moment as it's just like, fantastic <laughs> shot. <laughs> Unfortunately, wrong player. Oh, man. I like how he didn't even dwell on it. He just ran <laughs> to go get the bomb. Well, he needed, wasn't he like, needed to keep playing, man. He needed it, to keep playing. It wasn't like, uh, oh, wait, what did I oh, just do? Look how quick they're oh, moving no. up. Double CT jumps, jumping up into Palace. They're going to have the ability in Adrian holding the front entrance into A. At least got one nade frag at the back, but it's two on four right now. There's more nades that the GT players are just well known. And it's a full flank around them. Flamey will go down, but Angel is the one silently just waiting for the flank to move back. And there it is. Rallin with the bomb comes back. And with a six live point innocent, he gets shut down by Dossier. And Hellraisers will move forward, 11-9. Able to get another round on the CTs. It's getting tense. It's getting close. It's back to uh, low money on both sides. In fact, what's G2 going to do? They're actually going to save this. Interesting. They could have... No, they've spent. Why did the yeah, overlay not update for me? <laughs> so what do they have? It's got to be AKs. Or is it all Tech 9s? It really is all it Tech 9s. Like the nines, overlay man. didn't update the money for me. It said it had 5k on each player, so I was a bit confused. But it is going to be a save, and Flamey's going to catch out too as they try and rush in. Maniz does get one in response, and Maus has secured this ladder room, but they've smoked off the corner on Catwalk, so he can't go any further, and that nade bounces out, lands directly on his feet. 31 HP left for him. Well, you've managed to secure a window as well as ladder. Where do you go from here? <laughs> Well, looking at the defensive positions, obviously they don't know what we know, but A is the more logical choice. Mm -hmm. But Kutcher's playing a fantastic angle on the backside of this vent because they don't, you don't naturally check that. You're looking toward jungle, and as soon as they cross, he should be able to catch them off. So Connector might get you a little bit further, but then you've got a Dren inside the site. Maniz is setting up from Palace. But the longer they wait... You got, they're, wait, they're waiting for someone from Hellraiser just to rotate, but Hellraiser's not making the mistake, and now they're going to see him going out through jungle, both visible going out through jungle, and Maniz comes out through Palace at the right time. That'll bring down Adrum, which is going to open up the angle a little bit more, but with Angel, he's flanked up behind them, takes out one, looks for the second, able to take him out too, so it's only Maniz that's left with that pistol up in Palace. He's going to drop down, and Angel will make it a trip. In fact, yeah, a trip, not a quad. So this time, my money seems to be correct. And they will grab AKs. That's a real buy round for G2 this time around. Apart from Rollin. I see Kutcher can get that op to work this time. I know, he does. Him. He has a Galil. Yeah, so yeah, he forces out exactly what he can. And not a lot of nades. He does grab one HE and a smoke. They've already counter-smoked on the CT side toward that A ramp, though. But that's not where they are. They're Where's looking the for mid-presence. There's no one there to pick them off. You're right. Oh. So... They're kind of playing for this early it's, aggression toward A. It's probably a. a good thing considering how many like holes are currently in window. Because G2 showed everyone. They, they I, had all three firing at that window trying I, to take him down. The good news about it is that if they are going to give up mid, there's three oh. at A as a response. Nice shot, Kutcher. And Adren, or pardon me, it was uh, Flamey who was close to window who could get to B fairly quickly. The only real... That, that was the only real hole was B and, and it would have taken them a long time to get there. And with the information they were gaining at Palace, it would have been predicted. So... No mid that time. It's going to work out for them. Innocent, though, not done. Adren down. Yeah. But look over at B as Dosia is holding that angle down below the window. And it's also with Flamey up on the balcony. If they head down this hallway, which they are doing slowly, it's oh. going to come out for them. Flamey takes out Innocent in the mid. And Kucha, he rotated very early over here. So already gets the old pick over on Rollins. He tries to get through the apartments. And Flamey is also here. So they got both, both windows of kitchen covered. In fact, the door. And there it is. Mouse will drop. And last player is Spiro, and Dossi will be the man to bring him down. So 11-11, we get to tie things up now. Here in our final map of the semi-final of yeah, the CSGO Championship with, Series. with the money as it is, that's only three rounds because the fourth round and the first gun round went the terrorists. They won't have a full money bonus, so now it's going to be full momentum for Hellraisers. They won't even be able to force by themselves out to try and slow this down. So Hellraisers firmly in control. It's Kutcha pick time. There's one. Yeah, look for a second. As they're up very close with that Tech 9, he's already underneath the window looking for the pick and he's able to get it. So Kucha will drop. They lose their AWP in mid. And a quick boost to go up into the window too. Well, that's, that's perfect start.
because they're going to recover that op. They won't even push it all the way through, but they'll recover it to work with. Maniz is the one that has it. They know Angel's toward that ladder room. They'll smoke off the corner. I don't limit his ability to pick backwards in the middle, and Spiro's just waiting for him to dare come back toward that vent. He's not peeking at just this moment, but he is still lurking. Meanwhile, the rest of G2 is going to go the long way back over toward the A site. Adrian's already there waiting for him. You can see him just sitting in the ramp, and he's coming down a little bit further to be aggressive, so he can at least get that little choke line. And the first one coming in is going to be Mouse. So we'll see who's going to win the, uh, the pick battle right now. And no, it looks like Adrian's going to back himself up. They've got 45 seconds, so all they've got to really do is delay G2 to go for a crazy kind of push. There's still one in mid. I think Angel knows about it. He's going to just toss the nade down. No chip damage. And there's your AWP shot, and they're coming out. 30 seconds left on the clock. One just below the patio area, and Flamey, he's going to have them both line up. The third one as well. The bomb is down, and the last one left in that, in that A connector. Dossi will take him out from the short. Uh, 12 to 11, the momentum is there, and G2 could not punch a hole on that eco round up against uh, HR. Gone for a full investment, too, so Money Bonus won't be able to push them back to anything more than just nades and rifles. Unless they win the round, of course. Look at the Molotovs, three, four of them, so it's looking like an A setup, and they'll try and fire out the people from the backside. Won't let them retake, but Adren's actually inside the bomb site right now, dancing around the boxes. Roland's going to try and find it. He wants to be the first entry frag right here. He's going to come around the corner. He's being oh so cautious about it because this round for G2 means everything. They've got counter smokes out there. Another one in Palace. Oh, that fire. That wasn't yeah, well thought out because your teammate's already <laughs> in there. Nonetheless... He still Flamey, gets the kill. true to the name, Flames his teammate does get the kill. Sparrow, though, he's gonna. Oh, that's a counter flash from Adren. That's a bit questionable as well. Catches his teammates, but it does work. Oh. He does actually get Rollin with it. That's your bomb down deep in the site too. So Mouse has to find some absolutely magical bullets inside that clip. As they are a man down, they're still trying to push forward and pursue this position. He does get one. That's Adren. Well, the Dosia, bombs though, so oh, far. the timing knows exactly where Maniz is. They are all stuck in jungle, though. One smoke would hold them out. No one's got it, though. They've only got a flash. Mao's going to catch out Kutcher. They've changed their position smartly as Dosia now goes back to CT. That's innocent, and it's all too innocent in the end because Mao's drops. That's going to be another round. Hellraisers. And as I said, the money bonus is there, but there's not a lot to work with. They'll force out these AKs, but that's about all they're going to get. And that was the most disastrous thing that could ever happen to G2. You run yourself in, the bomb is just basically on the far wall of the site. I'm surprised uh, HR didn't move back a little bit further. Like As you said before, like they had three players that were basically in jungle slash window, and they had to flank one out to the side, but it was this nice little choke point where G2 was still able to pick up an extra kill. But uh, now... T2 will again to try and come up this mid. They do have the AKs, but Flamey able to hold inside the connector. A little bit of help from Kusha. Now he's got that AWP, but Maniz, he comes through, opens up that A site. Kusha still here, able to hold the line from jungle. And it's only one player left now from, from the T side, but HR took a lot of casualties. Dossier as well as Kusha, the last two players left alive. And Innocent, he's going to go for an A. Dossier is holding from, uh, from short, and Kusha's over at window, but it won't take long for him. Yeah, he's going to move over to jungle right now and look up towards Palace. I will be surprised if Innocent can get down to the bomb site. It comes down to one-on-ones, though. The problem is Kutcher's in a great op spot, and he's already... He's so deep yeah. as well. Like, how are you meant to even shoot no, that? I mean, he's already pre-aimed on it. If he wins this shot somehow, yeah, he forces that bomb plant, Not has to one. make Dosia retake it, but that's it. Kutcher's going to do it with the pistol after the leg shot. So, only two to go for Hellraisers. And again, the money continues to dwindle because... They'll force out again this time with absolutely nothing else to work with. They bought a little, a few more nades than I expected them to do. They went for a couple smokes. They went for a couple flashes. I think all but one player, Rollin, had nades. And uh, that it's means that they're just limiting themselves. The money bonus isn't that great. The only choice they have right now is to try and catch out Hellrace before they get into position. And it looks like they can't even do that. The blocking nades coming into the A ramp, not going to work. Kucha checking underpass, checking mid. They're not there. Every single player from G2 is going to push in. And now they're going to breach out. Adrian right below most of the lineup. He'll at least bring down one as Kucha brings the orb over. Flamey, well, he's at least able to get a couple. But this is just going to be a pretty, actually nice breach. But there's still two players alive for the CTs. One holding in connector, one over in short A. And Rylan does have the plant, uh, does have the bomb on top of the plant side. But with only 24 live points, it's a tall ask. And they're just running in, trying to spam him out. Looking for one, can't get it. Fortunate though, does get the bomb plant. That's 
A bit it, more it might give them, them something to try and hold for a draw. Yeah, well, that's it, it. I mean, it pushes them up. They would have been roughly 4,200 again a piece. Um, based on average, they're a little above that now. Rollins up to 51. So this time they will have full nades. But, I mean, it's match point. And gamers, too, haven't had an answer for six straight rounds. Seven straight rounds, excuse me. And, I mean, the kills haven't even been great. You go back, they two kills the first time, three, two kills, one kill, one kill. Yeah, they, they haven't even been being that effective. The last two rounds have been the closest. Oh, G2. This time there's no palace movement. They're all waiting around the A stairs. But there's a lot of sma a lot of flashes, a lot of smokes. And that's the complete A site. All vision is gone practically for uh, for HR. But they do have one sitting up very, very far. It's Adrian just sitting on top of the balcony. So the second city one comes up through Palace, and now one is on the way up. He's going to bring it down very quickly. and has to look directly to the right. And now, there it is. Mouse breach up high. But the defense is still going to be a 2-2 trade-off. They couldn't get all the way in, and Riley's actually going to be caught out by Dossier. Or does Dossier catch him out? In through the mid, Riley's going to get the advantage, but there's still one sitting inside that A connector. So it's all up to Spear to save it for his team. A one-on-two situation up against an Orp as well as an M4. And a bomb that's really deep towards CT. Flamey can hold this passively if he wants. We got one. With a hundred hundred on him. Passive or not, it's going to be AK versus Orp. And, uh, well, it's only going to be a shoulder tap. But that's all that's going to be required. HR will take map number two. Uh, or map number three, which gives them a 2-1 advantage, and that'll push them through up against Flipside. Yeah, this is the matchup I actually want to see, because if you look at the rosters, Markalov, Simple, both used to play on Hellraisers. You've got players on Hellraisers the that used blood. to play Flamey, uh, and I'm drawing a blank for whatever reason. I should know this, but basically they hadn't I even trade. <laughs> Why, is it, why am I going blank on this? But these two teams have a history. Blade was also the coach for Hellraisers back at ESL uh, Karevitsi last year. Mm -hmm. it, they know each other very well. Uh, there's a very healthy rivalry. I think Flipside's actually the team to beat out of the two right now. In fact, in their head-to-head, -head, I think there's something like 1-1 one one in, in one previous version. And, and the most recent was 0-2. Oh so we are going to see them in a best of five pretty much every map played. We'll see who's got the better number. That said, Flamey, our MVP for this match. Um, with a headshot percentage of 45% as well. That's a lot of kills and a lot of, and a lot of carry coming out from Flamey. He did a really good job too, always on the front lines. And always seemed to be that last man, like he was the last man standing for Hellraisers to win that for him. But yeah, many times. Quality. In fact, it was a Dren, by the way, who uh, so, took a brief spill off of Astana Dragons, went to Dat, and then came notes. back to them. I know, I went to them. I couldn't remember it all <laughs> for the life of me. So I'm so used to a Dren being a fixture with that team. Um, yeah. But that said, we are going to take a short break, very short break, I don't, I, roughly... Uh, well, we're, we're, we're going to say 15, 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Quick as uh, flip side, need to get into the server and get ready. And uh, and then we'll go into our deciding match for this side of the bracket, this Best qualifier. Best of five. Best of five. Winner make of this sure you, Make sure you got the league. coffee pot on. Uh, you're going to need it. You're going to need it between the games some. as well. Grab yourself a beverage. Make sure you have your toilet breaks before we start. And uh, we'll come back. We'll come back in 20 minutes' time. The underpass. Angel's waiting for him. At least Rollins gonna bring down one, breaks down two, and he has the bomb on top of him with 15 seconds left. There's not much more the T's can do, especially with that AWP. He's gonna go straight into the line of fire. They pick up the AWP, they get the round. In this game now. Yeah, now they've got it going, and I have to say, Hellraisers haven't found the executions. They did that one brilliant round where they smoked them out and Spiro rotated through CT, but they haven't done it since. Adrum, which is going to open up the angle a little bit more, but with Angel, he's flanked up behind them, takes out one, looks for the second, able to take him out too. So it's only Manizas left with that pistol up in Palace. He's going to drop down, and Angel will make it a trip. One just below the patio area, and Flamey, he's going to have them both line up. The third one as well. The bomb is down, and the last one left in that in that A connector. Dossie will take him out from the short. Man down, they're still trying to push forward and pursue this position. He does get one, that's a Dren. But the bombs Dosia, though, so oh, far. the timing knows exactly where Maniz is. They are all stuck in jungle, though. One smoke would hold them out. No one's got it, though. They've only got a flash. Mao's going to catch out Kutcher. They've changed their position smartly as Dosia now goes back to CT. That's innocent, and it's all too innocent in the end because Mao's drops. That's going to be another round. Hell